Uh, hello, Aaron Baker here. I'm with the mayor of Eugene, Oregon here, Lucy. Um, thank you for sitting down with us. Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and how long you've been uh, mayor. And yeah. Well, I was elected in um, 2016, took office a year ago in January 2017, so I've just completed my first year in office. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I know it's a recent kind of hot topic. Um, there's like everything, two sides to it, but recently it was uh, brought to you guys, your guys' attention that um, there's a desire to bring ride shares into Eugene. Mm -hmm. um, wh what's the current status of that? Well, the current status is that the council has asked staff to develop uh, some more information around how other localities have uh, contracted with uh, or allowed these rideshare companies to to work within their cities. We had uh, set certain criteria. They um, in 2014, and um, and I think a number of the rideshare companies felt those were too there were too many constraints. Our primary concern in the city is public safety, so we have looked at this from the perspective of background checks and insurance. Is that adequate? Does it meet our standards? And our concern is that it's a level playing field, that what we require of taxi companies, we will also require of ride-sharing companies. So we're, there's some new products that have come on the market. There's a lot more experience. It's, you know, now almost four years later, other communities have found a way to make this a, a safer system. And so we're, we have staff looking to that so that we can build on the models that have happened in other communities. Okay. And uh, have you ever used a ride-sharing? I have in Portland or? Portland, D.C., New York. Okay. You probably found it convenient. Yeah, it's convenient. I mean, I think, um, you know, kind of diversity is the name of the game here. A larger n number of uh, services, just we're a growing population. I think, you know, probably don't have robust enough taxi services to really meet the need in our community. Okay, and so the issue is their ride shares are not operating here in Eugene right now because currently um, I'm going to believe that they're not happy with the current um, expectations, yes. And so they're looking for loosened rules when it comes to background checks. They want to do their own independent background checks. Is it? Yes, they wanted to have their own structure. Uh, the city council, uh, it, you know, is concerned that we require a sort of set standard of background checks, and so we want it to be consistent across the board. So we're we're okay. looking at those products. Actually, there are other systems, third-party systems. There are other ways of doing that, and that's what staff is currently exploring, and we'll bring back to council. Okay, I I've currently uh, been uh, looking into a lot of the uh, different cities that um, do have agreements with ride shares in their communities, and what their uh, ordinance is. Is there any certain city that you're kind of looking uh, at uh, their uh, code and saying, "Oh, that might work for Eugene"? Or well, so I'm not the expert, but I will cite one one uh, piece of information that staff shared with us uh, a month or so ago, which is the city of Denver on background checks had instituted in their ordinance that that those background checks are renewed every year, so that if something has happened in the intervening time since the last background check, it gets caught. So I think that's a model that we're very interested in. Okay. And they're currently operating in Denver. Right. I, I think Austin's been brought up, but I'm not sure if they're even operating there anymore. Currently, Apparently not. Apparently okay. Not. And I looked at their codes, and it is a list and a list and lots of requirements. Um, Bend, Oregon seems mm -hmm. to have a pretty simple mm -hmm. um, program or uh, ordinance for that. I think the city of San Francisco doesn't even actually regulate red shares because it's regulated at the state level. And that seems to be, I don't know if that's something you would see in the well, future. There was, a, there was legislation that came before the, the state legislature last year. It didn't make, didn't make enough headway in the legislative process, but that, that was one option last year. It didn't happen at the state level, so we're still looking at what we can do locally. Okay. Now, what is the process of getting here in Eugene? Uh, pretty much that ordinance changed. What, what's the next step? Well, it's like any other process. Uh, you know, s staff provides information to council. Council asks questions, reviews. They, they then direct staff to develop ordinance language. 
it sort of goes through a regular le legislative process that comes back, it goes through a public hearing process, and then council votes. Okay. Now, to get a, on the agenda, it's currently not on the agenda, right? Do you see it? it well, it will come. It will come fairly soon to the agenda. So we had an update on this in sort of December, late November or December, okay. and uh, so we're, our goal is to move fairly quickly. Okay. And my understanding to get it on the agenda, would that be the uh, city manager and yourself? That right. We have a weekly agenda setting meeting, and so we review what the new issues are, what the status, is staff work prepared, are they, you know, what's the timing? So. Okay. So that's a weekly can you, discussion. Can you give us a? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think we've scheduled it yet. Okay, and I, I'm curious of what what's waiting uh, to get it scheduled. We have a long list of issues that we work on, and if you want to go to the city website, you will see my monthly dashboard report, and it has about 45 or 50 issues that are all at some level of concern to the city council. Some are on hold, some are very active, and so, you know, we, the council, we meet a couple of times a week, three weeks out of the month. I mean, there's only so much work we can get done at a time. So everything gets in the hopper there, we try to figure out which is most time sensitive, which is most critical, and, and deal with them as, as they rise to the top of the list. Okay. Um, I know the police chief currently there uh, has not been selected. Right. And so now there's a temporary. Right. And were you looking for the advice of the police chief to uh, affirm that the third party background checks that these ride shares use would be sufficient for the city? Well, I, I, I think that the safety, public safety and security concerns, we're always, we always want to hear what our public safety staff have to say. So the police department is definitely a part of that conversation. Okay. And I'm thinking that could be a three month process before that the new police chief is... Oh, is, I, I, don't, I, I don't think that that's a barrier. I don't okay. think that that's a barrier. I don't think that's okay. a rate limiting step in this process at this point. I think enough of that discussion and staff work has happened. Okay. All right. Um, now, so it, when when you're able to either um, the city manager or yourself will get it on the the work uh, get a work session. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then that will decide uh, what the ordinance language will be and then there will be public comment it, on it's it? This, it's actually the, the city attorney actually crafts that ordinance language, so the city council is, gives as clear direction as possible about what they want to see contained in that language, and then it's the city attorney who crafts the language itself. Okay. Is there room for uh, public comment? Always. Before that? Always. And so that the city attorney Always. knows kind of where we're yep. shooting for? And we've had a lot of co public comment already. We get emails. We, you know, we, and there's always any council meeting every Monday when we have a public forum, people can sign up and say what they need to say, and okay. we try to listen to everybody. So right. they always have that opportunity. If it's an ordinance that comes back for a public hearing, they have another opportunity. We pay attention. Okay. And then when you do have that work session, are you sitting down with all involved parties? Um, well, is there any room for all involved parties to be meaning, present? Meaning who? Oh, I... I all involved parties, I might think uh, representatives from certain ride shares that would be interested in the area or local taxi so, cab companies. A, a um, work session in general, a work session, staff prepare information. So it's usually the staff that has had those conversations to bring as much information to the table for the council. Those work sessions are not, um, the only people who talk in those work sessions are counselors and staff who are sitting at the table. Those are not public forums. They're not broad public conversations where anyone from the audience can chime in. So the work, we count on staff to do that work, and if council feels they haven't learned enough, they then ask staff for more information or more okay. clarification. Individual counselors can always have a meeting with any of those rideshare companies. So if they feel that they have not been hurt, they can always call up a counselor right. and say, or local taxi. Talk to me. Uh, Taxi. Yeah, taxi, you know, they're all, they, we are public servants. We are here to talk to them. Okay. Thank you. Is Thank there anything you. else no. you'd like to add? No, I'm glad you're interested. I think we're going to move forward. I'm optimistic. Okay. <laughs> and so we, we can shoot really soon. There's going to be a work 
Yeah, it'll happen soon. Uh, we're, we're it'll happen. It hasn't been scheduled yet, but it will be scheduled soon. Okay, I yeah. hope the uh, the public uh, keeps you uh, pushing towards that. So. They do. Okay. They do. They do. Thank you so All much. All right. Thank you, Liz. Thanks.